Hello friends, welcome to C Programming Tutorials. In this class, we are going to learn about memory allocation function. So memory allocation is nothing but in our previous examples, in previous programs, we declare many variables int a, int a of 5 like this. So what is a variable? A variable is a memory location. Here in this memory, you are going to allocate some memory for the variable a. Here the integer 4 bytes, so we allocate 4 bytes of memory to variable a. Similarly, int a of 5 means we allocate 5 into 4, 20 bytes memory to the array a. Okay, so now, so this is also memory allocation, but here we are talking about memory allocation functions. So memory allocation functions means here you are going to allocate the memory by using functions, but in this case, we are not using any functions. Okay, if you observe that, here we are not using any functions. If you simply declare this variable, the memory is allocated. Okay, so that type we are called as a static memory allocation. And if you allocate the memory using any function, that we are called as a dynamic memory allocation. First, we see the definition. Static memory allocation. Declaration and definition of memory is specified in source program. If I write a program, in that program if I define a of 5, then 5 into 4, 20 bytes memory allocated automatically when I am declaring this array a. Okay, so coming to dynamic memory allocation, it allocates the memory at the time of execution. At the time of the execution, you are going to specify that I want only 16 bytes. I want only 16 bytes. So. 16 bytes of memory is allocated at the time of execution that we are called as a dynamic memory allocation you understand these two terminologies static means so before the execution only you are going to allocate the memory dynamic means allocate the memory at the time of execution for better understanding of dynamic memory allocation we are going to know the conceptual view of memory so if you observe that if i write a program like this int main in this main, I write the instructions like this. Okay. And in this main, and in this program only, I define two functions. Two functions. Okay. Now, this main program is stored in the program memory that is main. So, this program is stored in this memory. And these functions are stored in this function area. Okay. So this is program memory. Now in this, if I define int a, int a, now for this a, the memory is allocated in stack. So this is the a memory allocated in stack. If I define a variable int b globally, now this b memory allocated in globally section. Okay. So now when you are using dynamic memory allocation, the memory is allocating at the time of execution. So that memory is allocated in heap. This heap area you are going to use to allocate the memory at the time of execution. When the program is in execution, if you want to allocate the memory, the memory is allocated in the heap. Okay. I hope you all are understand how the memory is organized. Now we see so dynamic memory allocation functions. So dynamic memory allocation means allocates the memory at the time of execution. So we can refer to memory allocated in the heap only. Already we discussed that the memory allocated at the time of execution in heap memory only. Okay. Now we see so different memory allocation functions in that we have so four functions. One is malloc, second one is cloc, third one is realloc. Fourth one is free. Mlloc means memory allocation. Cloc means contiguous allocation. Realloc means reallocation. Free means deallocate the memory. We see so one by one. Mlloc function. Mlloc allocates a block of memory that contains the number of bytes specified in its parameter. For example, I want so 20 bytes of memory. Then I can allocate the 20 bytes of memory with the help of malloc function. The syntax for malloc function is you are going to give the pointer 
PTR equals to cash type. If it is an integer, you are going to specify in asterisk. If it is a float, float asterisk. And use ML lock and you give size as parameter. So this we are called as a parameter. So example, so PTR equals to int asterisk. This is the cash type integer. ML lock 10 into size of integer. The size of the integer is 4. Now 40 bytes of memory is allocated to pointer PTR. Okay. Similarly, CL lock. CL lock means contiguous allocation. It allocates the memory for arrays. So normally the CL lock function we are going to use to allocate the memory for arrays. Okay. Then what is the difference between ML lock and CL lock? The difference is that it differs from ML lock only in that it sets memory to a null characters. Null characters. What it means? So for example, I allocate the memory with the help of ML lock. That means some memory is allocated. In this, there is some guard brace values. Guard brace values. If the same memory allocated with the help of CL lock, with the help of CL lock, then the content in this memory is initialized with the zeros. Okay, that is the only difference between ML lock and CL lock. Coming to syntax, so PTR pointer variable equals to cache type into so CL lock n comma size. That means the CL lock function you are going to use to allocate the memory for arrays. That means here we can specify the size 10 comma size of the integer is 4. Then 10 into 4, 40 bytes is allocated. Example PTR equals to int asterisk CL lock 10 comma size of int. So 10 comma size of the integer is 4. So 40 bytes is allocated. Coming to ML lock here you can specify so 10 multiplication of size of or you are going to give the 20 means 20 bytes of memory is allocated to the pointer PTR. Here by using the CL lock you are going to allocate the memory for arrays. And next one is real lock. Real lock means reallocate. Already memory is allocated with the help of ML lock or CL lock. Again you want to reallocate the memory then you are going to use the function reallocate. It is used to reallocate the memory. For example I allocate the 40 bytes for PTR pointer. Now I want to increase that to 80 bytes. 80 bytes. In that case, I'm going to use reallocate function. The syntax is PTR equals to reallocate PTR comma new size. New size. Example. So PTR equals to reallocate PTR comma the new size. So 20 into size of integer or directly you are going to give 80 also. Okay, so 20 into size of 4 is 80 bytes. So the 40 bytes is reallocated to 80 bytes. Okay, and another function is free function. Free. So free function is used to deallocate the memory. So syntax is free PTR. That's it. Free PTR, the allocated memory to PTR will be deallocated. Now we are going to see one example. Here we are taking one pointer. So this is the pointer PTR. So this is the int type. Int n comma i. So print f enter number of elements. For example, I enter 5 as n value. So n equals to 5. Now I allocate the memory with the help of ml lock function. ml lock function. PTR equals to it is an integer. So the cache type is int asterisk. ml lock, what is the n value here? 5 into size of the integer is 4 bytes. So 5 into 4, so 20 bytes of memory is allocated here. 20 bytes. Okay, so after that, in this memory location, I'm going to read the values. So enter 5 elements, 5 elements. For i equals to 0, i less than n, that means 0 less than 5, true. Enter into this block, scan of percentage d, PTR plus i. What is the i value? What is the PTR value? For example, this is the 100. 100 plus i value is 0. So now whatever you are going to read from the keyboard that is stored in this location. 15. Let us read the value 15 and it is integer. So it occupies 4 bytes and or not 4. Okay, next iteration it becomes PTR plus 1. So that means 100 plus 1 means 104. I hope you all are know that pointer arithmetic. 100 plus 1 into 4, 104. The next value is stored here. 
नेक्स्ट इटरेशन 35 45 55 एंड लूप इज टर्मिनेटेड ओके भाई हियर देन वैल्यू बिकम्स 5 5 लेस देन 5 फॉल्स ओके एंड सिमिलरली बाय यूजिंग दिस फॉर लूप यू आर गोइंग टू प्रिंट द वैल्यूज हाउ सो पीटीआर ऑफ i सो इनिशियल इट इज पीटीआर ऑफ 0 इन नेक्स्ट इटरेशन पीटीआर ऑफ 1 नेक्स्ट इटरेशन पीटीआर ऑफ 2 सो हाउ वी कैन evaluate this ptr plus 0 ptr plus 1 ptr plus 2 like that okay now so by using this for loop you are going to print the content in this array 15 22 35 45 and 55 okay now in the place of ml lock you are going to use cl lock cl lock and here you are going to give n comma size of the int n comma size of the int now so 5 so size of the int is 4 so 5 into 4 20 bytes is allocated okay what is the difference between ml lock and cl lock when we allocate the memory the initial value of this array is all zeros all zeros that is the difference between ml lock and cl lock okay here i allocate the memory so 20 bytes now i want to increase this to 40 bytes so I can write like this. So PTR equals to reallocate PTR comma 10 into size of int. Now the size of the PTR is 20 bytes. That is reallocated with the help of reallocate function from so 20 to 40. 10 into 4, 40 bytes. Now the size is increased to 40 bytes. Okay. So after executing the program, at the end of the program, if I write like this, free PTR, free PTR. Now, the allocated memory is deallocated. The memory is deallocated. I hope you all are understand dynamic memory allocation in C programming. So now we see the execution of ML lock, CL lock and real lock and free. In this program, we are using ML lock for dynamic memory allocation. Here if you observe that here we are reading the n value if the n value is 5 we are going to allocate 5 into size of int that is 4 20 bytes. Now we are going to read 5 numbers and we are going to print the 5 numbers ok. After this by using this free function you are going to deallocate the memory allocated for ptr pointer. Now we execute this gcc program 55 dot c dot slash a dot outer enter number of elements in this case i assign 5 so it allocates 20 bytes memory and this is the output 11 22 33 44 55 okay one more time i am going to execute the program now i enter 7 now it allocates 7 into 4 28 bytes memory and I assign the data ok in this case we allocate 7 into 4 so 28 bytes memory ok now we see the same program with the help of CL lock instead of ML lock I am going to change the CL lock here n into size of here I am replacing with n comma size of int save the program gcc program 55 dot c dot slash a dot out now i give n equals to 6 enter the elements 22 33 44 55 66 okay for 6 elements we are going to allocate the memory and similarly so reallocate here we allocate the memory with the help of cl lock ok instead of that again i reallocate ptr equals to reallocate ptr comma n into size of int for example here i am declaring that n equals to 10 n equals to 10 here i am going to enter 10 values 
we execute this program gcc program 55.c dot slash a dot out enter number of elements 5 now I am going to allocate memory for 5 elements now again by using the reallocate memory for 10 variables so by using reallocate function now if you observe that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so first I allocate the memory by using CL lock for so 5 elements again I reallocate the memory for 10 elements by using reallocate function okay and by using this free function you are going to deallocate the memory for PTR function 